Welcome back. Now, Saudi Arabia has become a big player in tourism of recent times. And um, to tell us more about that and a particular Red Sea project, uh, we're going to go now to, to Paul Hoskins, who's a director of the ITIC uh, Limited Investorism Limited. Hello, Paul. And you're going to introduce our next guest. Yes, good afternoon, Rajan, and good afternoon, uh, uh, Greg, and good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, great to be with you today at our International Tourism Investment Conference Summit with uh, the Arabian travel market. And uh, as, as we speak about the developments in today's world, uh, we have some very exciting, groundbreaking and innovative project developments uh, on the go, and not least in Saudi Arabia in on the Red Sea. And Today I'm joined by Gregory Sarabian, who's the uh, executive director uh, for the for international in investment in the Red Sea development. And welcome, uh, Greg, to today's session. And we are all very interested in hearing about what Red Sea development is up to in Saudi Arabia um, and the very special ways in which this giant project is being approached because I know that uh, you're going to tell us a lot about the sustainable environmental aspects of the activities and the um, opportunities there are for joint ventures and further investment in this multi-billion pound, three billion do dollar project. And uh, I know you've had great a lot of experience uh, in the commercial and real estate world. Um, you were starting with Price Waterhouse Coopers. You're, I think, uh, a resident formerly of New York, now in Riyadh, uh, where you're joining us from today. And welcome. And uh, let us hear a little bit now about, well, not a little bit, but a lot about what uh, you're doing uh, with Red Sea Development in Saudi Arabia. So please, uh, let, um, let's start with your presentation. Thank you very much, Paul. I appreciate the introduction and uh, for everybody for inviting me to be a part of the ITIC ATM Middle East Tourism Investment Summit. As Paul said, my name is Gregory Sarabian. I am the Executive Director of Investment for the Red Sea Development Company. The Red Sea Development Company is developing Saudi Arabia's flagship tourism projects, the Red Sea Project and Amala. Both projects, bo born out of Vision 2030, are sponsored by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. And I'm here today to talk about the Red Sea Project, a pioneering project on the Red Sea coast, which is transforming tourism in the kingdom and leading the global transition towards regenerative development. But before we begin, here's a short video. We are breaking new ground. We're thinking differently. Sustainability is no longer enough. As David Attenborough so rightly mentions in his latest film, we're moving from being apart from nature to becoming a part of nature once again. For us at the Red Sea Development Company, nature is our most valuable asset and our greatest inspiration. We are located between Awaj and Umluj on the west coast of Saudi Arabia in an area comprising a pristine archipelago of 90 islands teeming with coral and sea life, spectacular mountains, rolling dunes and even dormant volcanoes. Our master plan was approved by His Majesty King Salman in 2018. Since then, we've been constantly breaking new ground and building on our promise. And to date, we've awarded over $2 billion worth of contracts. Our hub island continues to build momentum, created in partnership with some of the world's leading architects and designers. And work on our new international airport, designed by award-winning architects Foster & Partners, is well underway. 
Our site hosts 4,000 construction workers, and this number is growing weekly. Soon, they will be housed in our new construction village with the highest quality accommodation, health care, and sports facilities. The construction of our coastal village is progressing well. Eventually, this will be home to 14,000 people who will work at the destination. Connecting all these locations are newly completed roads, jetties and causeways. Upskilling young Saudi talent is also our priority. For example, our partnership with the University of Prince Mugrin has provided 120 scholarships for international hospitality management degrees accredited by a call Hotelier de Lausanne. And 45 Saudis from the local area have been trained to manage our 100 hectare nursery. Conservation is a must. Sustainability, a step in the right direction. Saudi Arabia's groundbreaking vision is coming to reality. This luxury flagship destination is delivering new standards in hospitality. Carbon neutral regenerative development is at the heart of our ambition. But the new frontier for tourism development is regeneration. This is what the Red Sea Development Company is all about. Okay. Great. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Look, the Red Sea Project is the world's most ambitious tourism project. It is a luxury destination created around one of the world's last hidden natural treasures, setting new standards in sustainable development, and will position Saudi Arabia on the international tourism map. Next slide, please. Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 recognizes the role sustainable tourism plays in its future. It is seen as a driver of investment, an enabler of innovation, a pillar of the economy, and a generator of jobs. Around the world, tourism accounts on average for 10% of a country's GDP, but in Saudi, it's about three and a half percent, which is mostly driven by religious tourism. We see a tremendous untapped market opportunity for leisure tourism. Next slide, please. So we are fortunate that the project is strategically located at the crossroads of Europe, Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. The size of our development site is massive, 28,000 square kilometers, which is roughly the size of the country of Belgium. We are an eight hour flight from 85% of the global population and can reach a quarter billion people within three hours. Our climate is comfortable with moderate weather and we have an average of 32 degrees Celsius in summer with little to no rain and little to no humidity. With weather like this, we intend to create the first truly year round resort destination in the GCC. Next slide, please. Look, we all know that the luxury segment is the fastest growing in the tourism sector. However, we focus on it for a more nuanced reason. We have 28,000 square kilometers to develop. While this presents a great opportunity, we focused on it more by necessity as it relates to sustainability. Most of our site is very fragile. And so while we are limiting our development potential, as we don't want to destroy it and fall victim to over-tourism, but by going up the chain scale, we're able to accomplish the goal as well as target array of return for our shareholder. Next slide, please. Look, our site is an untouched, hidden gem in every sense of the word. We have a diverse range of natural wonders, including an archipelago of more than 90 pristine natural islands, thriving coral reefs, sweeping desert dunes, mountains, canyons, volcanoes, stormy volcanoes. And when you take all of this and you layer in thoughtful planning, programming, and development, you're able to create meaningful experiences which create cater to today's modern luxury traveler. Next slide, please. In recent times, tourism has often been too disruptive. The social and environmental impact often outweighs the economic benefits. We believe this is our chance to rethink tourism and create a new formula for the ideal destination one with sustainability and regeneration at its core. This means that we need to treat our destinations with a purpose. Simply not making a mess of the place is no longer good enough. We need to seek to make the place better, not only for today, but for generations to come. And the key to finding this delicate balance between the status quo and sustainable growth is, and has always been, nature. And as the video said at the onset, to paraphrase Sir David Attenborough, we need to move away from being apart from nature 
to becoming a part of nature once again. And this has been our goal for the Red Sea Project from the very beginning. Next slide, please. As I've mentioned, sustainability is key to everything we do. Not only do we intend to preserve and protect the environment, but we're going to step further to enhance the environment. We consider ourselves pioneers in this. We've adopted best practices in circular waste management, zero emission mobility, sustainable food production, as well as sophisticated carbon sequestration strategies. We are using low impact construction methods and nature inspired solutions. For example, lightweight structures that can be placed and disassembled if required. Another way we are minimizing our environmental footprint during construction is by pursuing offsite manufactured buildings and structures whenever possible. The project will be completely powered by 100% renewable energy 24 hours a day. And to accomplish this, we're building the world's largest battery storage facility at 1000 megawatt hours, allowing the destination to remain completely off grid. Never has this been attempted before anywhere else in the world on this scale. It is the largest regenerative sustainable project ever designed and built and our goals are noteworthy. Instead of simply maintaining what exists today, we have set ourselves the goal to increase the conservation value of our destination by 30% by 2040. We have created the largest landscape nursery in the Middle East. It's the first to specialize in native and endemic Red Sea plants. We're protecting animal habitats and key endangered species, such as the nesting habitats of the crab plover and the critically endangered Hawksbill sea turtle. We launched a turtle tagging program in partnership with King Abdullah University of Science and Technology to track and better understand the behaviors of the Hawksbill and green turtle species native to the Red Sea. Now, while we're blessed with thriving coral reefs, now is not the time for us to be complacent. We are actively seeking ways to increase Red Sea coral reef abundance through enhancing reproductive success, through coral nursery development, and thermally adaptive reef building, as well as growing coral in the lab using 3D printing technology. And on top of all that, we also consider ourselves to be a good corporate citizen to where we will create socioeconomic benefits and employment opportunities. We estimate approximately 70,000 direct, indirect, and induced jobs to be created. Next slide, please. We are fortunate to have been granted a special economic zone designation. The SEZ allows us to create a legal and regulatory environment based on international best practices, as well as to create an environment with relaxed social norms to welcome tourists from all over the world. The laws are being finalized with the various ministerial committees and we expect to stand it up soon. Next slide, please. We are also creating a destination-wide smart infrastructure. This effectively serves two purposes. One is to enhance the guest user experience and the other is to create an infrastructure and backbone, which effectively allows us to monitor our climate and sustainability related activities and really hold us accountable. Next slide, please. So when you take all these key six pillars in total, our strategic location, the natural environment, diverse activities, sustainability at the core, the smart destination and NSCZ, we believe that this provides a compelling value proposition for today's modern luxury tourists. Next slide, please. As this is a leisure destination, the Red Sea Project is anchored in hospitality, and we offer a diverse array of experiences and price points. Our strategy has been to partner with best-in-class hotel brands with the reach and credibility to support our activities. We want to be able to leverage their distribution and booking engines to drive awareness to the destination. And while we were thoughtful in the brands chosen, we ensured that they will be complementary to the destination and not cannibalize on each other. Given that we are a luxury destination for phase one, Approximately 10% of our key count is your seven star hyper luxury product. About 50% is your traditional five star luxury product. And about 40% is what we call premium, which would be entry level luxury, like a four and a half star offering. So if you want exclusivity and privacy, we have our mono islands, which are mostly over the water villa product. Think the Maldives and Bora Bora. If you want to be where the action is, we have our hub island called Shurira, which has 11 hotels and is filled with all the amenities, like a golf course, dining entertainment, marina, yacht club. And if you want something even more exclusive and unique, we have our inland destinations in both the mountains and the desert. Again, there's something for everyone here at the Red Sea. Next slide, please. Our first phase comprises a total of 16 hotels and 3,000 keys across five islands and two inland sites. And will include all of the hard and soft infrastructure to enable and support the destination, including a brand new five-star international airport to ensure connectivity to major hubs and global source markets. The overall project, once completed, will deliver about 50 hotels and 8,000 keys. Next slide, please. So on completion, 
This will be an integrated resort destination offering a comprehensive array of hospitality and leisure and lifestyle options, all supported by state-of-the-art infrastructure. The Red Sea Development Company is the master developer. And while we are not selling off individual plots of land, we are seeking partners who share a commitment to sustainable development, Vision 2030, and the like. And we will partner with them in the form of joint ventures or fund formations. Next slide, please. We are progressing at a rapid pace and are looking forward to welcoming our first guests by the end of 2022, when the international airport and the first few hotels open. We have completed and brought online several assets and supporting infrastructure to date. To date, we have awarded over $4 billion of construction contracts and commitments. Late last year, we entered into a large scale public-private partnership to design, build, operate, and finance our primary utilities, including our renewable energy system. And we have recently secured and signed a $3.8 billion green loan facility to fund development of phase one, noting that this is the first ever real denominated green loan in the kingdom. Next slide, please. Look, we covered a lot here today. And candidly, a 15 minute presentation does not give this project enough justice. It is very ambitious and we are making great strides in bringing this to reality. At the end of the day, we are creating an integrated tourism destination that is a haven of barefoot luxury, bringing together nature, ecology, culture, and sustainability. With all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the presentation and please feel free to reach out to me with any inquiries. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much indeed, Greg. That was uh, phenomenal. And uh, it is without doubt one of the most ambitious and exciting uh, development projects anywhere in the world, I would vouch uh, at the moment. And to expect that the first property will be available along with the airport by 2022, 23 is fantastic. So I'm sure I join, everybody joins me in wishing Red Sea Development and you and your colleagues every success for the future. And in, uh, I hope, that there'll be some people on our, at our, attending our summit today who will be interested in getting in touch with you to discuss uh, the possible joint ventures which you spoke about yes. and uh, to take advantage of those opportunities because it's quite clear that it's ha all happening in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the moment. Yes, yeah, thank you, Paul. And we, and we, we would welcome that, welcome any dialogue. So like I said, please feel free to reach out and. Uh, Paul, I appreciate it. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you very much, Greg. And uh, we look forward to learning about the next stages at uh, future events. Thank you so Sounds much. Good. Take With care. That, I hand you back to Raja Bye -bye, to introduce the uh, next session, which is uh, promoting gender equality in the Middle East. So please wait a few minutes and we'll be back with you very soon. Thank you.